and then the bulb is just you know kind of like hey what's up guys steve here welcome back to the channel today we are not going to be doing anything on the jeep because instead we have a little something that we're going to do on the kia what exactly are we doing what we're going to do is install some hids let's get started All right, so how these work is all of the, the wiring comes into the headlight. The headlight has its own built-in harness, which is actually kind of neat for, you know, the cleanliness in the engine bay and stuff, but it makes it a little difficult when you want to do stuff like, say, put an LED in the, in the blinker. The LED in the blinker lowers the resistance. It throws a little warning message saying that, oh, you got a bulb out, and then it hyperblinks. And so typically you would fix that by putting in a load resistor but take a look here I mean this is brilliant this is it that's that's how you take the bulb out but all the wires come in into here just all of them right there this is literally all the wires for everything inside of the headlight so you would first need to find what wires what, which isn't too difficult, it's just still pain. Anyways, what we're looking at is um, this up here, this is the headlight. With HIDs, you know, that raises the question, well, you've got a ballast, igniter, you've got all that stuff that needs to fit inside here when there's not really any space at all. So how do you do that? They make them so that you put a hole in the back of this cover and you run the, the wire out from here and it goes in towards the ballast uh, fires off the igniter which then in turn comes back into here um, which goes to the bulb of course this particular car this is a 2020 uh, kia sportage it has this interesting piece of white um, i don't even know what this is i'm stumped i've tried looking up online what this thing is and i just i don't even have a clue if anybody knows what, what this is, uh, leave a comment. That's this is basically the first step is we got to take this, um, we got to put a hole in it. There's going to be a little gasket that fills the hole to allow the wires that go through. So that's, that's the first step for this. When you're doing anything like this, you should probably come up with a plan, figure out what might work uh, and, you know, what goes where. See where we can put some of this stuff. Just wire tie along this wire harness which, as long as it's tight, then it shouldn't be an issue. It's got plastic, uh, probably electrical tape, um, over this uh, wire dressing material, so it's, it's really stiff. So there shouldn't be any, any issue with, with just laying it across here with a couple zip ties. So that's, uh, that's the passenger side. Driver's side looks to be pretty much the same, the same idea. So up here, here's our cap, and then probably just leveraging uh, the wire harness I just have it going going across there now there's there's two holes in the in the ballast so we'll just zip tie top and bottom okay so this is a kit that I ordered online it is um, I forget who makes it um, I'll put a link in the in the description it comes with two ballasts. Um, each ballast is in their own box. And when you open it up, you get some mounting hardware. It's, there's not really much um, to leverage, but it is nice that they came, that they included hardware. This is the bulk of what we're dealing with here. This is the ballast. I think this is what tells the computer that there's, um, that there's nothing wrong with the lights otherwise it might um, it might throw some codes this is the uh, the car side so it'll come out plug into here go through this decoder into the ballast this is the igniter it says high voltage uh, caution 380 volts and it peaks 23,000 good little zap and that's the, the whole 
thing for that is the initial ignition of the HID because there's a gas. You can't just put in a low um, constant power to it. It's got to be a quick zap to get it going and then it slowly warms up and that's what this is. So then this guy right here is just uh, the wires that go to the HID itself. This is the bulb side of, of the gasket. So in your car right now, you've got your the wire that goes up and plugs directly into the bulb. But since we're dealing with HIDs and we've got all the rest of this excess uh, electronics, you have to pass it out because there's no room. So this is the this is from the car. It goes out down this wire. Then this wire plugs into the input on the ballast side. Then it comes in here from this part. All this stuff just plugs right in just like that. And then it goes into the light. Now when they ship it to you, it comes in this protective plastic with some foam just because of how fragile and delicate it is. So just carefully comes apart and then you just gotta feed it out and then it comes with a couple different gaskets just to make sure that you are that it that it fits correctly and that's about it so that right there is your HID and I'll just put it back together until it gets time to when we get to install it all so that's that's basically the rundown for for how HIDs work so let's get to it What we've got here is caliper, and we need to take a measurement on the size of this gasket so that we don't drill a hole too big. We should actually drill a hole, cut a hole, just a little bit smaller than, than the opening of this gasket. So calipers, they're, they can be really expensive, or you can get one um, relatively inexpensive for around like 15 or so dollars um, you don't need we're not dealing with rocket science so it doesn't have to be super precise um, so any one of these inexpensive can um, can get the job done if I were to open this just a tiny little bit more it's still pressing together I'm pretty sure that we would need a one inch hole. So that's what we need. We need to cut it one inches and that should provide a good opening for this hole. Anybody know what this is and why this is necessary? It's hard. It's not really heavy. A couple ounces, but it's hard. If anybody knows what this is, leave a comment down below. I got this one inch spade bit. Well, one inch is, is what we want for a hole size, but I wanna go slightly smaller. It has the cutting teeth and it's just slightly more narrow than the rest of the bit itself, the paddle. It, it helps drive the bit down. It's really aggressive. And so drill a pilot hole so that it sits just in the threads. And then I want to get it to the point where this just starts to bite and I'm going to do that on one side. It's going to go in this way. It's going to just start to bite and then I'll use the same hole and come in from the other side until it just starts to bite. And then you know, maybe flick it, pop it out, and then we should be all set. That's what we're going to try. Don't know if it's going to work, so we'll figure it out at the same time. Well, that might actually be it. That might be the money. Okay, five sixteenths.
were in reverse, because it seems like it was trying to just really dig in too far too quick. So that looks pretty usable. Reusable. And the hole itself looks pretty clean. Got to just smooth that out with a little bit of sandpaper. If you have a file, that would work too. But I would say that this looks pretty good. It should make epoxying up pretty, pretty easy when it gets to that point. Okay, that's one. That is two. This one looks even better. Okay, gonna clean that up. Let's just do a test fit. I'll do that for a second time and I'm going to save you the hassle of watching me do it again because um, it's just it, it's the same thing over again. Before we put the HIDs in let's take a look to see what the halogens look like. The flickering of the daytime running lights is because of the frame rate. That's blinking at close to the same um, frequency as the camera is recording. Um, but you can see that the that the halogen bulbs just have that amber color temperature. It's probably around like 21, 2200 Kelvin, which is it. I mean, it lights up the road, but it just doesn't have that nice quality look. So that's what we're going to fix. Very careful not to touch the bulb with your finger. These get very hot and the oils themselves, the oils on your finger, if you touch the bulb, it will boil, get super hot and it will it'll cause the, the bulb itself to just fracture.
All right, we're gonna take a, a look to see if this ignites. Uh, no, it's not going to yet. Okay, now we're gonna test to see if it ignites. And we have success. Now we just gotta get it in there. Okay, the rubber gasket's too big. Carefully take that off, not to touch the lens. We just gotta dress that up, make it look nice. We'll do that in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna get to the other side. I'm starting to run out of battery. Um, I'm gonna get to the other side off camera, but that's, that's how you get that in there. HIDs. You can see that they're warming up, but pew, HIDs. Now the HIDs have have had some time to warm up. They are quite bright. So there you have it. That is how you go about putting HIDs into your car that normally doesn't come with HIDs. Now you can do it with your car. I would highly suggest that if you do do it, that you make sure that you're only doing it for your car if they have projectors, okay? These are projectors. You don't wanna use these in cars that have reflectors. Those are usually typically bigger and then the bulb is just kind of like you got the reflector you got the bulb that comes out through the middle and then it shines into the reflector and then out so if you use HIDs in that then you're just gonna be scattering light everywhere you're gonna be blinding everywhere these guys if you if you use HIDs in projectors there's gonna be a nice cutoff line it's gonna be a nice straight line and that cutoff doesn't have nearly as much light going up above that line that you would if you had reflectors. These have a lot greater accuracy uh, for how they distribute light. So if you get HIDs and you put them in your reflector, then you're going to be blinding every single person that's coming towards you and you're just going to be a hazard on the road. So don't be that guy. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe while you're there so you don't miss out on any uh, cool DIY things as they come up. And make sure to follow me on Instagram. I am BigStevoDIY. And stay tuned for the next one. Catch you later.